Legends of Wasteland City is a post-apocalyptic anthology series and may contain references to drugs, sex, and violence along with the occasional vulgarity. You've been warned. Dukes of the Nuke, The Ones Who Came Before, Chapter 4. Hey, what are you doing? Mutt froze and looked the man over quickly. He was a bulwark, the worst of the worst, one of Zealot's lieutenants. He wore a long black beard and had a pair of scars running across his left cheek. His imposing size filled the opening of the chain link fence, leaving no way out. The boss wants the girl brought to him. Mutt spoke with all the bravado he could muster while grabbing the girl's arm with authority. Now get out of my way and lead me to it. He walked toward the opening of the gate, pulling the girl with him. I don't know you, so why don't you put that girl back in the box and we'll go talk to the chief. I don't think he wants to wait, so you better- Mutt pushed forward another step, but the bloodback held out his arm and stopped Mutt in his tracks. It was like hitting a brick wall, and before he knew it, the giant man had him pinned back against the fence, and with the same move pushed the girl away from Mutt's reach. The box of vacuum tubes fell in the dirt beneath Mutt's feet. Matter of fact, I don't think I've ever seen you before. The giant snarled at Mutt, almost sniffing the air to smell him out. He gripped Mutt's shirt below the neck, so tight Mutt had a hard time breathing. The man looked at the girl over his shoulder who backed herself against the fence on the other side of the small enclosure. Then he looked at the door to the radio room and saw the broken lock on the ground. Oh, a hero, huh? You're gonna fry. Just wait till the chief hears about this one. Did you really It was almost in slow motion as Mutt watched the large man's face drop. His eyes go empty, and his entire weight crumble right in front of him. The man landed at Mutt's feet under his own crushing weight, almost taking Mutt down with him. Mutt pulled his foot out from under the falling blood back just in time and looked up at the girl, who was standing right behind the man with the bolt cutters in her hand. How did you... Let's go. The girl dropped the bolt cutters in the dirt and headed out the fence, stopping just past the gate. Mutt looked down to see the box of vacuum tubes half covered by the bulwark's shoulder. It took every bit of strength he had to pry it out. There was a pool of blood already forming around the man's skull. He knew they should try to hide the body, maybe pull it inside the radio room and close the door, and possibly buy themselves more time before the entire tribe of raiders were out to get them, but he looked at the bulwark's hulking size and knew there was no way the two of them could move him. There was no hiding this. They had to get out of here. He grabbed the girl's hand and led her back the way he came in. The sun peeked over the horizon, and a golden light fell over the gas station complex as the pair light-footed their way up the middle of the path, past the tents to the rear of the restaurant where the war vehicles were parked. If they find that guard soon, they're going to catch us really quick in one of these. Oh, we could take one. Can you drive? That'll be too loud, and they'll catch us with the rest. Give me a sec. Mutt grabbed the lighter from his pocket and then walked over to the truck with the refining barrels on the bed and flicked the lighter's flint wheel a few times close to a grease puddle beneath the barrels. Nothing. He walked to the dumpster and lifted the lid. On the top of the overloaded trash heap was a few folds of old, dry cloth. It could possibly be a hundred years old, protected by the metal dumpster lid and the dry climate of the desert. He grabbed the cloth, dipped it in the grease on the truck, and sparked the oil to life. The fire burned slowly, but that would work in their favor. He left the cloth burning like a candle wick on the back of the truck bed, and the girl grabbed some more papers and torn fabrics from the garbage bin to add to the burn. Let's go. They quickly moved together around the last of the buildings and past the dead Jonesy still laying in the dirt. I know him. I know. Mutt pulled her to keep up as her eyes locked on the dead body. Oh, by the way, I guess that makes this yours? He pulled the short, rusted knife from his waistband and handed it over to her. Yeah, but how did you get it? She looked back again and saw the blood-soaked dirt around the man's body. But Mutt didn't answer as they half-jogged up the hill and discovered his original scouting spot. He grabbed his pack hidden by the rock and opened it, taking out his canteen and stuffing the box of radio parts back in its place. He gave the canteen to the girl, who took a big swig before handing it back to Mutt. He took a few gulps of his own. Okay, we gotta move. Where are we going? Back to the Duke's camp. The Dukes of the Nuke? You're a Duke? Yeah. Mutt tried to suppress his pride. Oh no, I'm not going there. What? Why not? The Dukes sell weapons. They sell weapons to the same raiders that tried to kill us. The ones who killed my family. Mutt saw the sadness in her eyes, even as she tried to hide it. 
He didn't really know what to say. Yeah, he knew that the Duke sold weapons to whoever could pay, but he never thought about what they were used for afterwards. He was about to say something, anything, when they heard the sound of a siren going off back down at the raider camp. They peeked over the hilltop to see a raging fire, engulfing the big truck and threatening to catch the others. A handful of raiders were already on their way to the site, some half-dressed, one trying to fit his boots on while he ran. Mutt's smile betrayed his enjoyment as a couple bloodbacks grabbed the motorcycles and moved them out of the fire's reach. The truck closest to the flatbed already had a wheel on fire as one of the raiders got in and drove it away. The inflamed tire blew out on the move, but the driver kept going until he was on the other side of the restaurant. He parked in the dirt just off the broken pavement and jumped out of the cab holding a small shovel, and he started digging dirt from the ground and throwing it on the inflamed wheel. At least with the wheel down, that one won't be chasing us for now. The flatbed was fully engulfed now, and the burning barrels of oil plumed thick, black smoke high in the air. The front end of the technical truck with the 30 caliber machine gun was on fire. There were a couple of guys on the truck's bed already trying to dismantle the machine gun from its stand, but they kept getting pushed away by the heat of the fire just a few feet away from them. Meanwhile, most of the small vehicles were safely moved away, and a few raider bystanders fruitlessly tossed water on the fires from their canteens and small bottles. They're gonna be so pissed. As much as I'm enjoying this right along with you, I'm gonna get out of here while they're still distracted and you should too. Oh yeah. Look, you don't have to come to the Duke's camp if you don't want, but maybe let's stick together for now? She looked at Mutt, nodding her head just enough to let him know she'd stick with him. They wouldn't have long before the bloodbacks figured out what happened and the whole camp was on their tail. They ran up toward the four-lane freeway, known as the road, passing the travel exit ramp. The road would lead them east, back to the Duke's camp, but they couldn't risk being seen, so they quickly crossed the freeway to the other side, down where there was an embankment with a dirt footpath they could run along, out of view from the other side of the road. They ran full speed as far as they could, then slowed their pace to a fast walk. Hey, you really saved my ass back there. So, thanks. I, uh, I didn't catch your name. Zen. And you really tried to kill Zealot? Yeah, I staked out the camp for three days. Learned Zealot's moves, where he stayed at night. I was close, I almost had him. How'd you get caught? I just got tired of waiting one night. Walked straight down to the building and tried to follow Zealot through that back door I sent you to. That building is the only place he's ever alone. He heard me behind him and stopped my arm as I was about to stick him with this knife. Two inches. Two inches and I would have had him. But he hit me and I woke up tied to that chair. So that explains the... Mutt motioned to her black eye. Yeah. Mutt could tell she really didn't want to talk about whatever happened next, so he changed the subject. You really let that bulwark have it. You should have seen the look on his face. Mutt made his face go blank, opening his eyes real wide at Zinn, and stuck out his tongue for comedic effect. She laughed a little. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for breaking me out. I don't know how much longer I would have been alive. Mutt smiled at her, and they both picked up their pace again, jogging in silence. Back at the raider camp, Zealot walked past a group of exhausted, dirty bloodbacks, up to where the fire was now extinguished. The oil truck was completely burned out, down to just the frame and still smoking, billowing a putrid ash. The 30 caliber machine gun was off the technical truck, but its front end was toast. Zealot looked at the bloodbacks gathered around. Real quick, who was in charge last night? One of the bulwarks stepped forward, a muscular woman with a crooked red mohawk. It was me. Without blinking, Zealot pulled his sidearm and shot the lieutenant in the stomach. The woman stood for a second, then dropped to her knees holding the wound. Deep red blood flowed around her fingers. A couple bloodbacks moved in to help her. <coughs> Leave her. They froze in place as the injured bulwark fell face first in the ground, breathing heavily but holding back screams of pain. The group all just stared back at Zealot, waiting for whatever came next. The new bulwark, Bile, pushed his way through the crowd and spoke. They took the girl, and they got the jump on Butane. There must have been a few of them to take him out. We're down two trucks, the refinery, and the technical. The scout will be fine, but it may be a few days to track down a new tire. The small wheelers were all pulled out in time. The bleeding bulwark on the ground, no longer able to hold back the pain, started moaning. 
It was loud enough to distract Zealot from Bile's report. He motioned to the woman writhing in pain in front of him. Drop her in the hole. Four bloodbacks scurried in, and each grabbing a limb carried the shot bulwark off toward one of the old gas stations. <laughs> Zealot grabbed Bile's shoulder and pulled him in close. Find the girl, and whoever did this, bring them to me. Zealot walked off back toward the old motel, leaving Bile to command the hunt. All right, let's get those bikes gassed up. Scouting team, head out and find them. From the corner of his eye, he could see the four bloodbacks drop the shot bulwark with the crooked red mohawk into one of the old underground gas tanks through an open access hole above. He didn't try to hide the smirk that crept across his face as they covered the hole with an old street sign and walked away. In his mind, he just cleansed another of the weak from his horde, and the blood bags were stronger for it. The Ones Who Came Before was written by me, Mike Makeshift Darling, narrated and directed by Makeshift. Mutt was played by Sean Cunningham. Zinn was played by Mallory Trinnell. Zealot was played by Jay Preston. Butane was played by Chad Mongo Hanna. The Bulwark with the Red Mohawk was played by Erica Blinn. Bile was played by Kaylin Chase. Legends of Wasteland City is a production of the Apocalypse Post. Stick around after the break for more info about today's episode. <laughs> If you're enjoying Legends of Wasteland City and everything we do here at the Apocalypse Post, consider joining our Patreon. By becoming an Apocalypse Post patron, you're not only supporting the creation of content like this, you're also going to earn some perks for yourself, like a discount to our merch store, and early access to everything we create. So consider joining and showing your support at patreon.com slash the Apocalypse Post. All right, hey survivors, you made it through another episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is, of course, Makeshift, and I'm here gonna talk about the episode a little bit. For those of you who have been following along in real time, yeah, we uh, we missed one. Well, we didn't miss an episode, we missed a week where I didn't get a chance to upload, and I know at least one person, I hope more, was uh, anxiously awaiting the arrival of the next episode. So thank you for your patience. I was doing a bit of traveling, and um, as you may have noticed during the credits roll for this episode, uh, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, six characters, uh, and they were all played by different people. So it uh, it took a little extra effort to get everyone's lines down and and put it all together. It's uh, it's kind of fun. These episodes are getting bigger. And I don't know, it's a blast. They feel like movies to me, and they're really fun to work on. But since we're talking about the cast, I do want to bring up a few people who are, you know, these guys are all putting in their time, they're putting in the effort, and uh, they're all doing it for free, which is amazing. I thank them so much. And hopefully, for season two, we'll be able to start paying them. I don't know if I'm gonna do a Kickstarter or just, you know, hope that the Patreon grows a bit more. But um, but yeah, if uh, if you guys are interested in donating to the show, I'm sure we're going to be doing a big round of fundraising before season two because these guys deserve it. And um, and uh, I didn't think it was going to take this much time to produce every episode. <laughs> it's so funny. I just keep making it harder on myself, but I hope it's worth it on your end. Um, and uh, I hope you're really enjoying the stories because uh, as, as I always say, I love making them. This is so much fun. So if you guys haven't yet, much played by Sean Cunningham, and he finally got some real lines in this in this episode. And and uh, his first recording, uh, we messed up, and there was some extra noise, so he actually came back and did a second recording. Actually, the um, the girl who plays Zinn, who's Mallory, who I've mentioned before, um, she helped record his voice. So thank you both for going through the extra effort. But um, yeah, you can check out Sean Cunningham. Uh, he's got some really cool music out there. Um, and uh, if you just go to Instagram. And it's at Sean the Cunning. That's S E A N the T H E Cunning C U N N I N G. You can um, check out some of his music. He's also got a link tree. Just link tree, uh, link tree, 
So it's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Sean Cunningham, C-U-N-N-I-N-G-H-A-M. He's got some amazing music. I absolutely love his stuff. Uh, and he actually plays around here in Nashville all the time. So I love going to see his shows. I've seen him play a few times now and his songs are great. Uh, same thing with Mallory. Uh, fantastic. You've heard me talk about them many, many times. They're called Crimson Calamity. Uh, her and her and her bandmate Lauren. Uh, absolutely fantastic. So uh, check them out. They're called Crimson Calamity. And I believe just CrimsonCalamityMusic.com. Um, and we, of course, have Jay Preston showing back up as Zealot in this episode. Uh, Jay is a professional voice actor. And uh, he was, and well, him and his wife were the first voices I used for this show back when we did the teaser with uh, the Schofield Strifters. And uh, I, he's just so good. Every time I get his lines, I'm just like, wow, you, you're amazing. That's just the way it is. Another guy that really surprised me at his sudden, well, I guess he's been at it a while, uh, but Chad Hanna. He's actually a Duke of the Nuke, and he played the very large bloodback, uh, which you found out his name was Butane. Uh, of course, it's a posthumous Posthumous? Posthumorous? <laughs> posthumous name. Posthumorous. Posthumous. A dead name. It's a dead name. Uh, we find out that he was called Butane, just so he had an, a title, you know, for the IMDb. But uh, but yeah, Chad uh, is, and he's a giant. He's a, what, 6'4", 6'5", 6'6"? I don't know. He's he's a big man. And uh, and Mongo is just a, a, a huge character at Wasteland Weekend. Everyone seems to know Mongo. Uh, and of course, his counterpart, Mango, <laughs> when it's uh, Dukes After Dark. But anyway, uh, yeah, he played Butane. And uh, it's kind of fun because I think of Butane as kind of the, the equal and opposite of Mongo. Well, I guess he's not so opposite, but very much his equal because he's just the giant of the bloodbacks. And um, so to have their voices be similar is not so bad. But, uh, but of course, he did send me some Mongo voices and they're going to be a bit different anyway. So I wasn't going to have the bulwark with the red mohawk say anything. And then um, a friend, we were hanging out. Her name's Erica Blinn, another fantastic musician here in Nashville. Uh, I believe you can look her up, just Erica Blinn. She's all over the internets. Um, And uh, she was hanging out and I said, hey, do you want to do a couple lines for me? And she was like, heck yeah, I do. So we stepped into the sound booth and... um, you know, I, I had her do her one line and then like half an hour of uh, breathing and pain moaning and that kind of thing. Uh, it was it was a little awkward, but it was so fun. And it sounded great in the episode. Well, I, at least I think so. I hope you guys agree. Um, but yeah, thanks for the effort, <laughs> Erica, with your one line and forever breathing and moaning. And then finally, Bile was played by my buddy Kaylin Chase. Uh, Funny, you you guys are never going to believe this, but also a musician here in Nashville. And Kaylin is actually going through this really interesting thing where, um, oh, I I, I forget, and he might hate me for mentioning it, but uh, he had nose surgery recently for, um, I don't even know what, he had some kind of a some kind of a growth thing in his inner nostril, so he had surgery for that. And then um, it something didn't go right. And so anyway, his voice was all messed up because of it. I think probably because he's been coughing up some post-nasal drip or whatever. Uh, Too much information. I know. I'm sorry. But deal with it. This is an apocalypse show. We're going to get kind of gross and real sometimes. But yeah, his uh, he had been coughing a whole bunch or something. So his voice was shot. He kind of sounded like... uh, like uh, a, a little bit of a like a wastelander after being at the festival all week when your voice is just gone. That's kind of what he sounded like. And I, and he was like, I'm sorry, my voice isn't there. And I was like, no, 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 my friend, that is perfect because you're playing a bad guy today. And he was like, yes, he was very excited about that. So that's it. That's the cast for this week. Everyone was so amazing. Please check out their stuff if you can. Um, I'll put some links to their websites below and actually... Um, out of everyone here, you gotta, you guys gotta check out Kalen Chase because he's got some, uh, I forget what they call it, but it's it's fairly apocalyptic. He talks about like, you know, death and love and all sorts of you know world-ending stuff. So, um, I think you guys will like his music. So uh, I'm while I'm recording this, uh, Detonation at Uranium Springs is getting started, and uh, I'm really sorry to be missing that one. Um, it it just seems like all these festivals keep happening, and I just keep not being able to go. Um, but hopefully that'll change someday. I don't know. It's just, it's tough to, uh, you know, take off several weeks a year to go do this stuff. So maybe one day when this is my full-time job and all I get, all I have to do is hang out at apocalypse festivals and tell stories, uh, I'll be able to go to more of them. But for now, you know, got to pay the rent. 
Uh, <laughs> that's just the way it is. And everything's so far away because I'm here in Nashville. There's no festivals too, too close. There's one in Alabama, one in Georgia, and one over in Oklahoma. But all of those are, you know, several hours away. And, um, and then the ones on the West Coast are days away. Days. Days away. And you can't... Well, a lot of people fly to festivals, but I can't. I gotta bring all my stuff. Because... I just got a lot of stuff to bring. I guess I could try to do it a little bit more light-footed, but um, I don't know. It's tough to think about. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys over at Detonation are having a great time. Uh, it's an amazing festival. If you have never heard of it, uh, or if you're not a festival goer, it's probably the second largest festival in the United States, coming in around a thousand people. Um, and I think it's just Detonation.us, or you could look up the EOD. That's the end of days. Uh, and they're, they have several festivals throughout the year, so you can check them out. Uh, and speaking of festivals, we just dropped the Wasteland Weekend Highlights Reel for 2021, I think last week. Uh, and it's actually going to be part one. I'm going to work on a part two for them as well. Because I ended up with so much footage that I had an entire Highlights Reel cut before I even got past Thursday. So the, the, the Highlights Reel that's out there right now is just Wednesday and Thursday. And they're still Friday and Saturday. Uh, and for anyone that doesn't know, if you're kind of new to the show or you don't know who I am, um, I also run the video crew at Wasteland Weekend uh, to kind of you know help create some of their video content. Uh, and the Highlights Reel is the flagship that we work on every year. So very excited to have that out there. Finally, we kind of held off on it until tickets were on sale uh, because Wasteland was also working hard on Neotropolis, their um, cyberpunk festival. So now we are fully in Wasteland mode, people, and we're just counting it down. Uh, also, for you guys that follow along on the Facebook, when it comes to face, when it comes to uh, Wasteland Weekend, Thomas Kearns, the photographer, he'll be starting his 100-day countdown real soon. Thomas is an amazing photographer, and he puts out these great photos, and it's always fun to watch them count down every day. Until he gets around, oh, I don't know, around 30 days, and you realize it's a month away and you're not ready. Plus, for those of us who show up early to the festival, um, the 100-day countdown doesn't even count because you actually have to be on the road and be there early. So I show up, oh, uh, I guess about five days early. And in order to get there five days early, I got to leave five days before that. So I'm leaving 10 days early. So when it counts down to 10, I'm on the road. That's pretty much the way that goes. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. We're going to do that Patreon drawing next week. So this is your last chance to get into the Patreon. I, I think it's like 48 or 49 right now. It's close enough. We're going to do it. So Reliable, who made the uh, ba bomb and the um, first aid kit giveaway for my patrons, he's super excited and I'm going to get together with him. We're going to set up a time. I will announce it probably on Facebook and Instagram so you can watch live if you want. And uh, we're going to pick a winner and send out this wonderful little gift package finally because I'm very excited about it. And um, what else? What else? What else? Also, we're still going to do the uh, koozie the koozie giveaway so if you do a review of the show on like apple Podcasts or anywhere they let you do an actual review or even um like a like a five star well it has to be a review you got to write it you got to write something because i love reading it and finding it and that'll help other people find the show so you got to write a review wherever you can it doesn't have to be apple it can be anywhere that that they do reviews take a screenshot of it Send that screenshot along with your address to theapocpost at gmail.com. That's T-H-E-A-P-O-C-P-O-S-T at gmail.com. And I will get a Apocalypse Post Snap Wrap Koozie sent out to you. These things are pretty cool. They go around your can, you know, your real world can, and turn it into a rusty soup can so you can fit right into whatever post-apocalypse environment you happen to be in. And lastly, we do have a merch store, so if you're interested in supporting the show by buying some cool swag, uh, head on over to theapocalypsepost.square.site, and once you get there, you'll actually see that there's a super sale on the Wasteland Weekend 2021 event map, the one where I flew a drone and took like 50 pictures, stitched them all together, marked out every single street in every single placed tribe along with a bunch of extras and some Easter eggs, and I printed it up on a 27 by 39 inch poster. It's huge, but you can walk right up to this thing and it has so much detail. Honestly, there's detail that did not fit in this. 
it's so much bigger. The actual file is like billboard sized. So if I could ever print it on a billboard, you could walk up to this thing and possibly see people's faces. I don't know if that's possible, probably not, but it's a very, very large printout and um, the poster's great. And actually someone asked if I could laminate it. Yeah, I can laminate it. It costs a bit extra. You'll find that on the store as well. But while you're there, check some other stuff out because if you hit $35, I'll, there's a free shipping. Just use the, just use the code free shipping and uh, you'll save the $1.99 because <laughs> I already reduced the shipping. I'm trying to make it easy to buy my stuff. I'm trying my best. You know, I don't know if I'm making much money on any of this by the time it goes out to you, but I'm happy to make it and it does help support the show and it keeps me busy when I'm bored packaging stuff up and getting it in the mail because I actually do it myself, just so you know. And... Uh, <laughs> That's about all I want to say about that. But yeah, go to my store, buy some stuff, join the Patreon, uh, because it all helps support this show and it helps keep things going. So I really appreciate all of you just for listening. And at minimum, if you enjoyed today's episode, please share it with a friend. And if you hated it, share it with an enemy, along with a bolt cutter to the back of the head. And I will see you next time, survivors. Stay alive. And days and days and days and days and days.